Hallelujah. Let's give a hand clap to the Lord. <clears throat> Amen. It's time for Africa. Amaje. So when I say it's time for Africa, you say hashtag seize the now. It's time for Africa. It's time for Africa. It's time for Africa. A hand clap to Jesus. This is the hour. This is the time for Africa. Again, we want to welcome all of you who have come. There are those who are in the pavilion. Uh, God bless you. I'm also informed uh, we have a followership right now online in different countries. I'll just mention some of the places. Uh, Bangkok, Ethiopia, Juba, Somaliland, and also Nakuru. We are also having Pastor Kari from Hope uh, Church, the one who spoke to us some time back on the subject of the detour, if you remember, He's also watching online. Why don't we appreciate all the ones who are watching online? We thank God for, for this. In our midst, we have children. We want to bless them. If the children can stand, if I can't see them from here, lift them up so that we all see them in the pavilion as well. We thank God for the children. Where are the children? Yes, right there. Yes, hallelujah. The children are all around us. Another hand to the Lord as we appreciate the children who are with us. And together we say, these children shall be mighty in the land, and they shall do what? Exploits. We bless them now in Jesus' name. A hand clap to the Lord. We are blessing our children. We are blessing Africa. We are blessing our future. And also the youth who have been in high school and now have closed school. Can you wave? Been in high school on a break. Stand up. Just stand up. We, we bless the Lord for the now generation. Yes, we have right there. Ah, right there. I'm seeing a number. Yes, yes. A better hand clap for these young people. We are glad to have you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our now is here. And you just heard Brother John, who was online, reminding us that tomorrow we are having Esther uh, Obasike and Guardian Angel ministering from here. Uh, please, I want to see the magic of one. You know what the magic of one is? One has power. You can invite another, isn't it? The Lord will provide the spaces. Even the parking. I know you may have struggled a little bit because of the tents, but I thank God you're here. God will continue uh, providing for us. And then on Sunday, of course, uh, like you are told, we are having uh, Bishop Omai Kefa, and we are also having Christina uh, Shusho. She's coming all the way, traveling for this, and we are trusting God for a mighty time. Just to tell you, again, parking is going to be adequate on Sunday. Mkoga Green behind Safaricom. And also Westlands Primary, not far from Sarit Center. And there will be buses there from 7.30 a.m. We shall have buses ferrying, ferrying people here. The service starts at 10.30 a.m. We have prepared space for over 15, about 15,000 people. It's going to take you and me to bring those 15,000. And I'm saying the magic of one. How many will bring one more person? Let me just see by, by faith, by faith. Hallelujah, I'm seeing those hands. The Lord can see. Hallelujah. And if you can bring two or three or four, uh, we are going to have enough, enough space. Then on Saturday, we are trusting God to have a testimony tent right near the gate. What you know as a youth sanctuary, we have uh, prepared a story of Parklands Baptist Church. And you'll be entering through the main door and you go round in a circle. We have put the story of Parklands Baptist Church, our testimony from inception. Beautifully done, and I don't want to tell you more. On Saturday, we are trusting the whole day. We shall have the place uh, open, and we can come and see the story. The Lord has been good and faithful to us over the seasons and generations. And God has been with us through you and your contribution. And we are trusting God that Africa will be turned around. Now I'll ask Reverend Ambrose Nyangao to come so that he can invite the speaker. Unto the Lord. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor you're looking good, better than yesterday, and tomorrow you will shine, meta meta, shiny shiny, sparkle sparkle, wear shades, come on give God a big hand. 
<coughs> we are about to hear God speak to us. And before I introduce our speaker today, we have cards uh, that the ushers have. It is called the Connect Card. And it is for you. We want to connect to as many people as we can. Sometimes at the altar call, we are not able to get everyone. And yet there's somebody there who just wants to connect with the pastors. And so there's a card here, and it is perforated at one end. And you have, if you're able to fill some details, and then there are your desired prayer requests at the, at the back, we like to get these cards uh, because we want to pray for you. And we want to believe that God, we actually believe that God answers prayer. And so, whatever you're going through, our God is bigger than it. I'm saying whatever you're going through, God is bigger than that. The Holy Spirit is already in the house. And from the time Rebecca started the worship, we know that the Spirit of God is moving in amazing ways. And so, take time. We'd like to connect with you. I grew up in the Anglican Church. Hallelujah. I was baptized when I was very small. Then much later, I was confirmed. Tell your neighbor, confirmed. <laughs> then I grew up. We shifted places. We came to Parklands. And the church I was going, which is St. Stephen's Jogo Road, was very far. So we started coming to Parklands. And God opened a door uh, for me to be part of the Parklands Baptist Church. One of the places we used to go is All Saints Cathedral. We used to go to quite a number of churches when we were young. Nairobi Baptist, the same Sunday, Nairobi Baptist, <laughs> All Saints Cathedral, Parklands Baptist. And when we got time, we went to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. And then a ministry came to, to town that truly really blew our minds. And that was Lighthouse. Hello. And the Lord used that ministry in amazing ways. And we thank God that today we can have that partnership with Lighthouse to celebrate God. While I was at uh, All Saints Cathedral, uh, we were able to make connections and make friends. One of those friends was Reverend Tom Otieno. And today we are excited because God has a word just for you. Tell your neighbor, God has a word just for you. Let me say something about Reverend Tom Otieno. He's the senior pastor of Lovington United Church. Reverend Tom uh, is an Anglican priest who is passionate about worship, youth, healing, and discipleship. He is involved in worship ventures through a flail. Africa, let's worship. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Give God a big hand. Amen. And he's also very involved uh, in the healing ministry. He is a graduate of Daystar University, having studied Bible theology and music. He has recently written a book named Understanding the Deliverance Ministry to be launched in September 2018. He is married to Susan and together they have four children, two girls and two boys, the north, the south, the east, and the west. <laughs> Come on, let's stand up and let's appreciate Reverend Tom Otieno, who comes today. We celebrate you. Lord bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because of the joy of ministry. And Lord, that you have brought your servant today. You have anointed him. You have anointed him to speak. You have anointed us to hear. And so, Father, we bless you. May the Holy Spirit who has been moving since we started continue to move even now as the word comes forth. Lord, we take authority ever over any spirit that is not of God. We bring it at your feet and we release the presence of God. Master, we say thank you. If you believe that, you better say amen. amen. Good 
Good evening, Paki. God is good. And all the time. I want to say that there were days that Pastor Ambrose used to wear jeans. <laughs> and he always had a bounce. That bounce has never gone away. <laughs> and I've always known Simo. Simo, thank you for being faithful. I think one of the things we can write home about you is faithfulness. Um, Lovington United Church is a collabo. <laughs> it's a collabo between Anglican Church of Kenya, Presbyterian Church of East Africa, and Methodist Church in Kenya. That's why it's called United. And so we receive greetings from Lovington United Church. Amen. And also receive greetings from the Anglican Church of Kenya. Receive greetings from my family. My wife Susan, who was not able to be with us here, she's still recovering. We had a bouncing, and I mean literally, bouncing baby boy. <laughs> 14 days ago. And so we have, we have a 14 day, 15 day old baby. And uh, he, he is called Shalom Mohoeri Lodge. <laughs> Shalom, of course, you know, means peace. Uh, Muhoeri is an intercessor, and Lodge is a victor. Um, that is the fourth born, and uh, we have the first three. Shekina is the first born. She's 13. Um, she's following after Rebecca's footsteps on keyboard and voice and guitar. Um, the second born is Shama, also doing the same. She's 11. And the third born is Dawood. Dawood is also a singer and a pianist. They're all shaping up to be psalmists. They'll probably preach, maybe, later on. Um, may they, <laughs> indeed. And receive greetings from them. Amen. They're all students of uh, Rusinga School. We want to talk about the now generation, and I want to, first of all, read the word of God. So, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 15. I'd like to request that we read together, and maybe as a request, to request you to stand as we make this reading. We can have it on the screen as well, whatever version um, is fine. I'm okay with the New King James, but if you don't have it, the other versions are also saved. So it's all right. <laughs> Let's go together. There is a time. Let's go. To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to drink and a time to laugh. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit has the worker from all that which, which he labors? He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts except that no one can find out the work God does from the beginning to end. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing shall be taken from it. If God does it, that men should fear before him. That which has already been, and what is to be, has already been. God requires an account of what is past. 
This is the word of the Lord. Please sit. In talking about the now generation, it is important that we define who those are. And so, as we talk about the now generation, who are these? First of all, the now generation are those who redefine definitions and they redefine boundaries. They redefine definitions and they redefine boundaries. I hope that thing can start rolling. Um, <laughs> go to page one. <laughs> they redefine definitions and they redefine boundaries. And you find that mostly in Genesis chapter 6. But there's something that is forbidden in Proverbs 22 verse 28. It says, do not move an ancient boundary that the ancestors have set. But one of the hallmarks of the now generation is redefining boundaries. Part of that is okay because in redefining boundaries, we end up defining ourselves. But part of it throws people off into what they should not be doing and what they should not be becoming. And so in redefining definitions, that is a double-edged sword and requires what we are going to be discussing later, some of those lessons, to know what can be moved and what should not be touched. Number two, this is a generation that thinks with its feelings and listens with its eyes. Thinks with its feelings and listens with its eyes and indulges its appetites. That's why today, some of the fastest growing up enterprises in Nairobi are entertainment spots, isn't it? That's where we think with our feelings. And we do what? Listen with our eyes. And what else do we do? Indulge our appetites. And we find what happened to King Solomon is that when he followed that path, he was never able to win the war against his own appetites. In the end, his appetites touched his heart and changed his destiny. And those are things we must think about if we are going to touch this now generation. The third, the third quality or the third characteristic that defines this generation is that it runs without purpose and direction a lot of times. In that passage, 2 Samuel 18, verse 19, 22 to 22, Absalom has just been killed, the son of David. He had some insurrection. He raised rebellion against his dad and took over the throne. And then, so Joab goes out there and kills him. And then Joab gives a Cushite the information to run with. But there's a young man there who says, I must run. His name was Ahimaz. And Ahimaz says, I must run. And Joab asks him, for what purpose? You have no message. He said, but by all means, I have to run. Well, Joab says, okay. He sends the Kushite, the Ethiopian. He says, you go and tell David we have already killed his son. So Ahimaz is still standing here with Joab. And he repeats it. He says, by all means, I must run. And Joab says, you want to run? Run. He was given no mandate. He was given no commission. He was given no direction. And he was delivering nothing. But he ran. He even outran the messenger. <laughs> and when he arrived, he arrived first and he had no message. And there are times that this generation operates like that. The downside of innovation and creativity is that you can run without a mandate. And that you can deliver things that are hollow and hot air. There's something called vanity. Vanity stands for something that you see, you feel, but has no eternal value. That's vanity. You see it, you feel it, it's momentary, it's fleeting, but it serves no eternal benefit. That's Ahimaaz. It can be a generation that runs without purpose and runs without direction. Thirdly, it is a generation that is attracted by counterfeits. 
Counterfeit pursuits and affection. Counterfeit pursuits and affection. Genesis 13, verse 10 to 13. Lot lifted up his eyes and he looked east. And he saw the land before him. And it attracted him. And while there's nothing wrong with being attracted, part of that equation included Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Bible says, and Sodom was there as well. And he was aware of what Sodom stood for and where it was, but he still lifted up his eyes and he went that way. And he went and settled in Sodom. And he had a wife there. Oh, yeah. He had children. And at the end of the day, he only came out with his wife and his children. His wife became a casualty on the way. And he ended up with his daughters. And his daughters tricked him. And they had sex with him. Perversions begin to happen in the family. They break down the moral fabric and the spiritual order that God has established. And produce succeeding generations of people who have no spiritual direction. Because of a poor heritage. That's what attra counterfeit attractions and pursuits do. We are a generation of feelers. And we like to feel. But that's not the end. There are also good things about this generation. We'll be hearing them soon. Number five, they are alienated from meaningful relationships through toxic family and friendship dysfunctions. This is actually Genesis 37 verse 4 rather than 34 verse 7. So please correct that. It is Genesis 37 verse 4. This is the story of Joseph. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 37 verse 4 that Joseph's father loved him and made a precious robe of many colors for him. And he favored him. And when the brothers saw that Joseph was favored by his father over them, they hated him. They hated him. And they attacked him. And later on, you know, they came to the point of nearly killing him. Why it not for Reuben and then Judah? Those are the two people who saved his life. Reuben intervened in the beginning. And then in the end, Judah said, let's sell him. Why kill him? Just sell him. Get rid of him. Otherwise, we will have problems later on in life. We live in a generation where relationships have become scarce and thin. We have more people who live in isolation. In silos. Live alone. Walk alone. Talk to themselves. And now in the era of gadgets, gadgets can talk to you and you have no responsibility towards them. You don't have to feel anything for them. You don't have to connect with them. You don't have to be committed to them. You don't have to break their hearts. You can only break the screen. <laughs> Yet, we don't understand that God put us in relationships so that we can get spiritual vitality and support. I want you to know that no maturity will ever happen outside of relationships. Because relationships are where we are nurtured. They are where we are fed. They are where we are tested. If there's somebody today you're not talking to, that's a test. Because there's nowhere in scripture where it says you cut off your enemies. It says love your enemies. And love is a doing word. Love is a doing word. You love your enemies. And so when we live without relationships, we occupy a place that God has not designed we should occupy. When we allow relationships to be toxic around us, we find cheap targets to blame. But we, in the process, run away from our responsibility to make those things right. Because God has not put us in perfect relationships. He has put us in working relationships. Every one of those, including you, is work in progress. And only the grace of God 
can align you with the purpose of God for relationships. And when we allow relationships to fall into disrepair, then we run into problems of isolation. And when isolation comes, it brings in a lot of problems. And today we have a generation that is, we're talking more about depression, we're talking more about suicide. Those are isolationist diseases. We're talking more about people who are lacking what you call the strength of character to fulfill their assignments. People who will not burn on, they will burn out. Brilliant, talented, endowed, but empty. You cannot finish with an empty heart. A full pocket never fills your heart. You don't empty your pocket. But you can also not transfer what is in your pocket into your heart. Those two come by different processes, although they are related. Number six is that people who contend with the truth, the truth through endless secular humanistic arguments. There were some fellows in Acts chapter 17. They were in Athens, the city called Athens. And the Bible says about those fellows is that they used to spend the whole day arguing, theorizing about philosophies. And you know philosophies are just that. Good, well-meaning words that are connected, that try to connect ideas about life that sometimes can have no leg and have no foundation. Theories are good because they sort of give you relationships between things and they try to put boundaries by defining what this is and what this is not. But when God is not the foundation of this, secular humanistic arguments will only make us sound logical but will never put us to the place of spirituality. The word secular comes from the Latin seclorum. Seclorum is an ancient word that means removed from God. It means the absence of God from influence in your life. It means God is peripheral in terms of influence. He does not have any business in your life. Humanism Basically, is man can do everything without the help of God. And if he needs God's help, it's just a little push at the end. But man can basically figure out everything. And so the basis of most arguments always start from the wrong premise. What do you think about what God says? Is it really true? That's the same thing the serpent told Eve. Did God really say? You and I know God really said. It's the same trick he tried to play on Jesus. He asked him, if you are the son of God, you and I know he is the son of God. He attacks the basis because he knows if you accept to argue from a point of no basis, he will beat you at your game. Number seven, seven characteristics is they want to gain honor and success through deceit. There are some fellows in Joshua chapter 9 that are called Gibeonites. Gibeonites came and they had worked their trick perfectly to trick Joshua. And it worked. They knew they stood no chance against the advancing army of Israel. Because the advancing army of Israel was being advanced by God. The Israelites were only human vessels that God was using. But it was the power of God at work being displayed through people who had properly positioned themselves at the time of their blessing. And here they were. 
when these people heard about their situation, they came and they said, we have come from very far and we want to make a treaty with you. This is all in Joshua chapter 9. And Joshua did not check this with the Lord. He went ahead and made a covenant with these people. And when he made a covenant with these people, he acted presumptuously. And then he discovered they were from around. And they called them and he said, why did you deceive us? They said, we were afraid of you. We knew we, start, we stood no chance. And so here we are. You do what you want with us. They knew now we can't kill you. But you will never climb the social ladder. You will always be water carriers and woodcutters for the house of God. That was a curse put upon Gibeonites. But I want you to know something here. The whole thing that informs corruption and greed is something called deceit. Deceit is when we want to gain without just labor. We want to have a reward without working. We want to get something that we are not entitled to. It defeats the processes. And so today, more than ever, we are celebrating something we should not be celebrating. We are celebrating individuals who are rich instead of asking why and how they got rich. Deceit flips everything on its head and says, provided you've got the money, you can dictate the temple. That may be true, but not by God. Because God will always call out where the wealth came from. Here we are. And so I want you, the young generation, to know that there is value in getting something you have worked for. There is value in processes. And there is value in waiting. And many times we lack the maturity to wait. Let me tell you, there is nothing as difficult as waiting. Well, you see it on the road, don't you? Somebody will come and drive his car and yours. They'll come and they will put their hand out and they will give a very obscene sign to, to show that your head is not working because your car is not going the way he wants it to go. Please note it is your car, not his. He already has a pair or rather a set of driving equipment in his car and he cannot occupy two at a time. But it's all about patience. How long can you wait before you snap? How long can you wait before the result comes through? How long can you wait before God comes through? It was the test of King Saul. He was told, wait seven days. Seven days passed. Samuel wasn't late. He delayed. And there's a difference. He wasn't late. No, he wasn't. He delayed. And there are times, and many times, God is not late. He delays. And when he does that, he is stretching you. So that the day he gives you what he gives you, what he gives you does not possess you. You possess it. You know you came upon it by process, not chance. You value him above it. And you worship him above it. Because there are people who can't be blessed. Because if they are blessed, they will abandon the altar. The deceit of the Gibeonites was not just about molded bread and a covenant. It was something deep within us that always wants gain and honor when we haven't worked for it. When we haven't been around long enough to dig and to labor. I want to say this to 
the young upwardly mobile young professionals who are succeeding. And I'm saying it with sensitivity. It's not always a nice thing to succeed when you're young. It's not always a nice thing. It has been glamorized before us. So we have awards like top 40, under 40, top 30, under 30. And we're going to have top 20, under 20, I think, the way we are going. And I have no quarrel with that. I only want to say this to us. When you're done being CEO at 42, where do you go? When is lunchtime and when is supper? Oh yeah, there's a scripture like that. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10. If you can find it for me uh, in, the, in the PowerPoint. Eh? Ecclesiastes chapter 10. I want to give you something. This is a side, this is one of those side plates. You know, every, every someone has a side plate. So you have to go to verse 16. Let's look at something here in verse 16 of Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Okay? All right, let's read it together. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child and your princess feast in the morning. Go to the next one. Blessed are you, O land, when your king is a son of nobles and your princess feast at the proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. I'm going to clap to the Lord. That's wisdom right there. Let's go back to verse 16. Let's read it together. And actually make it your memory verse. <laughs> Let's try this. Together. Verse 17. It tells us that there is a danger in succeeding too young. Today we pursue success with such gusto that sometimes we get to the top and realize there was nothing there. It was an illusion. What we were looking for wasn't there. And you sit there and I'm not spiting you if you are there. Please go ahead. Go ahead and be there. But I want you to know that the God who made times and seasons also knew when what should come to you. And if you counterfeit and somehow accelerate things that come to you and they come to you prematurely, you all of a sudden one day wake up and realize, I have run the race through shortcuts. And I have to go back and start running again. And that's painful, people. It's painful. And that's part of the Gibeonite deception. We always think we can gain and reap without sowing and tending and cultivating. It should not happen, although it does happen. It should not happen. Wait your turn. Hit your zenith when you are ready to carry the weight of what lies there. Wait for stature to build before you can pick up any weight. Don't run ahead of you. There's some good news though. So from number eight. <laughs> yeah, you see, I told you there are good things coming. So creative. This is a creative generation. Innovative. They do things that are out of the world 
And these are things we must celebrate. We must take and we must showcase them. But in the same vein, we must remember that talent and hard work produce success. But continuous success is produced by godly character. And so today, God, uh, uh, the world is crazy about talent and hard work. Work hard. You're talented. Work hard. But they never tell you also gain wisdom and understanding. Because that will keep you there and keep you rising so that you only tend upwards, not So for some people, their success is their worst enemy because when they hit the top, they start looking down instead of looking up. They look at who they have beaten and then they fold their hands and say, boy, ain't I great. You indeed are. But you haven't reached. You should not desire success before character. Don't do that. The day you do that, it becomes your undoing. Number nine, they're audacious. Audacious means this is, a, this is a generation that is bold. They test the boundaries. They go out there and do crazy things. Let me tell you, there were days in our churches where you could not take a selfie. You would be out of that church, smoked out. Rebecca, there were days your husband's hair was sinful. <laughs> Where? How do you? How do you do the timer like that in church? <laughs> I like your style, man. But this generation kept pushing, did it not? It kept pushing. So now we have. All sorts of things, but we have realized the problem is not in the container. No, 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 no. Don't focus on the container. Focus on the content. We can have young people as cool as they are in church, filled with the Holy Ghost, stylish, upwardly mobile, and seeking God. And we no longer need to chase them from church. We no longer need to put hindrances and encumbrances and all kinds of things that make people vexed for nothing. These are people who also, unfortunately, have gone back to my negative ways. <laughs> Experiment with darkness. And today we have a lot of uh, websites that teach people witchcraft, teach people how to join satanic secret societies. I want to take you to Genesis chapter 6, at your own time study it. And in Genesis chapter 6, the Bible begins by talking about sons of God who came in and had sex with women. And they produced a generation of giants called the Nephilim or the sons of Anak. And so, us, let's read it together. Now it, became, it came to pass. Together? is okay let's stop there that is a very very scary passage because it tells of a 
a mix that should not happen. That a certain breed came from elsewhere, and what did it do? It mixed with humans. And these were demons. They came in, and they had sex with women, and they produced a generation that had flesh and blood, but we don't know what else they had. Strange. The olden days, they called them giants. They called them anarchites. They called them Nephilim. And they recur and recur until you can't ignore them in scripture. But what was going on here? I want you to take note of this. There are certain spiritual portals that should never be opened. But they can be opened. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis chapter 3, Satan comes in the form of a serpent and he has a conversation with Eve. And he deceives Eve. We are back to that deception. What was his purpose? His purpose was he, so that he can gain access to the human realm. Why? Because the human realm, the authority had been given to Adam to rule and to have dominion. And Satan could not, please understand, could not have access unless the access was given to him. That's why the Bible doesn't say that Satan forced Eve to eat. But he actually caused Eve to eat. And Eve caused Adam to eat. There was no force involved. There was no coercion. All there was was the opening of spiritual portals through deception. Because young people are always constantly seeking and searching. We're now dealing with a problem in our high schools and in our primary schools where Young people are involved in strange things, are doing strange things. People are interacting with demons. They have opened certain portals. That should not be that something diabolical has come into. But I want you to know that is not always the end of the narrative. God has the last laugh. There's one passage I love. It's Psalm 2. <laughs> Psalm chapter 2. Please put it up there so that we can look at it. Psalm chapter 2. We're going to read from verse 1. All right? Let's go together. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? Verse 2. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bones in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. So let me tell you, with all these things that are happening and portals being opened, you know what God is doing? He goes, <laughs> is that all you have? He's not shaken. He still loves his people. But he knows you and I need to be equipped to rise up to the challenge. And that's why we have conferences like this. To equip the saints, not just to rise up to the challenge, but to become e effective so that they can come to the fullness of stature of the knowledge of the Son of God. And that fullness is important. That fullness is important. So don't get too worried about demons. Huh. Hi. Don't. But in the same vein, I'm telling you, don't get ignorant about them. That's why Paul said, we are not ignorant about the devil's schemes. But it was just one line. The rest of the time he talks about other things. Because you know he has dealt with Satan with just that one verse. We are not. That means I have my eyes on you. I can see what you're doing. But I have you contained. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I have you contained. Why? Because I know I'm equipped. I know what to do. So if you cross that boundary, I'll simply put you back in your place. 
So we don't need to be afraid of our young people and their experimenting ways and going to all these and opening portals and something diabolical manifest. Just know where to find help. Hallelujah. Yes, know where to find help. And once you find help, know where to be equipped. Part of the help is getting equipped. Now I want to begin to close this message. I want to begin to close this message. We want to understand the season and reach this generation. In understanding the season, Pastor Ambrose already talked to us yesterday about time. A time chronos. Time has those elements. One of them is chronos, which is a chronological sequence of events. It's the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, and future regarded as a whole. Time is something that keeps going and is a resource. And time and chance happens to all of us. There's also the time that is called season. And I want you to understand this. Time will happen to all of us. Season will happen to all of us. But as to whether we are aware of what season we are in is a totally different matter. Because you cannot wear warm clothes in summer, can you? You cannot dress scantily in winter, can you? You see, seasons are those deliverables within time. Those deliverables within time, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, that they serve God's purpose. That's why he said there is a time for everything. So if it is time for this, God has given you time and he has decreed that this is the season for you to do whatever it is you're doing. Whether it's weeping, he has built into that time the season to weep. And also into that season he has built grace for you to weep. So that the weeping does not break your spirit. So to say this, there is no amount of pain that can break you unless you allow it. For everything that happens in a season has grace. God provides in advance for every one of those seasons. And he moves you from one season to the next. And when there is a shift in the heavenlies over your life, you will sense in your spirit that there is an adjustment. And then, you need to position yourself for grace because you can never avoid the time and the season, but you can squander it. You can never avoid the time and the season. But you can what? You can squander it. When time comes, the season manifests. Thirdly, we can be in the right time, but miss miss the season. That's how we squander it. Fourthly, this is the time to reach the now generation. How do we know that? It's never been a time where the church is resourced like now. The church is resourced. All we need to do is know what to do. And we're going to talk about that in a few. Number two, the church is equipped. Resources we have, we also have people who are equipped. See, equipping happens to people. Resourcing is materials and all that. So we have both the equipment and the what? Resources. Thirdly, technology is today you can have a virtual church anywhere. Fourthly, broken lives provide perfect opportunities for us to reach out. Let me tell you, when Satan contorts, God laughs and the church steps in and picks the harvest. That's what happens. That's the equation. Whenever somebody is broken, 
The end game is never so that they can be broken. The end game is so that when they are looking inward and going through the pain, there is an agent of healing right next to them. The Lord sends them someone and says, there is a healer who has committed to heal you and he will heal you because those places of brokenness are points of entry into this generation. They're not wasted. With God, nothing is wasted. Everything is invested. Even the so-called wasted years, Satan has been telling you a lie and you probably have bought it that there are some years you wasted. Some people go into relationships that go nowhere. Then they got so angry with themselves and with the person who went nowhere with them. <laughs> and every time they talk about that, they say, no, I wasted years. You never wasted years. You invested years, marking time, entertaining your enemies. But in the process, you got stronger, you got wiser because there was no other way of you learning that lesson. There's no other way. For some people, God has to give them object lessons. <laughs> they are called, for example, lessons. Because when he does theory, they fail. So what does God do? He allows a fool into your life. With your permission. Please understand, the fool never forces himself on you. No, you go looking for the fool. And you caught the fool. And sometimes you marry the fool. Now, when you have married the fool, please understand, divine investment has begun. It has begun. Because with God, there's no shadow of turning. Every one of those tears you shed, one day when you stand to speak, and God has raised you, the stature with which you speak, the authority with which you speak, Huh? The authenticity with which you speak. The audacity with which you speak. Satan has no response. Because he tested you. And you've passed. So do not. Do not. Waste. Brokenness. Do not waste it. It's an investment. If all you can look behind you is a trail, you can see behind you is a trail of broken things, go back and pick them. That is not to say you go back to your past, but go back and pick them. And put them in the hands of the potter. And he will build them. And he will give them back to you. And when he builds it, it will be a mosaic. And a mosaic is beautiful. It is beautiful. And it is strong. You can't break it. Why? Do you know why you can't break things like those? Because it is made up of many broken pieces. Put together. Glued together to never break again. You can't break someone who has been broken and fixed. You can't break them. So the end game is never that you're broken. No. The end game is that you're fixed. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Next one. The lack of direction and the foray into darkness by this generation results in greater seeker sensitivity. People are not always lost. They lose their way because they were looking for the right way. Yeah? They lose their way because they're what? And if you sit with them and you can show them that Jesus is the truth and his way is perfect and his power is above every other power, they come to truth. Because these are seekers who lost their way. That's why Paul became such a powerful apostle because he was a seeker who had lost his way. 
And one day Jesus stepped into the equation and said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. Now, I have turned you around. You're no longer going to do those things you are doing. But I'm going to use your passion, your education, everything you have to terrorize the enemy. I will use that. I will use that. Number five, we must get the right tools and the right models as a church. We must get the right tools and the right models. And then number six, God is anointing and raising more young people today more than ever. Now I want to finish. And a good preacher finishes like four times. So I'm going to dash through the rest. How do we reach the now generation? How do we reach them? We must be passionate to take down the enemies of our souls. The giants must come down. In 1 Kings 18, one person stood in front of the nation and said, bring on the prophets of Baal and the prophets of Asherah. Bring them on. We're going to have a contest. And he took them down single-handedly with the power of God. You and I can do that. We must identify the giants of this generation. Number two, we must be sensitive to the sight and sound of rain. In the same chapter, 1 Kings 18 into 1 Kings 19, there had not been any rain. And Elijah said, I hear the sound of rain. He saw the cloud as the size of a man's hand. And he said, I hear the sound of rain. Number three, we must teach the lesson of Joseph. If our young people are going to rise up, they must learn what Joseph learned. Number one, that we must conquer our appetites. Because there are many Potiphar's wives and there are many Potiphar's husbands. <laughs> Oops. There are many opportunities that appeal to our appetites. We must conquer our adversities. God puts us in situations that test the depth of our character. Those of you who are in architecture and in building, you know that there are certain trees that are grown and they are exposed to very harsh conditions. Why? Because of the weight they are going to carry when they are used in building. And that is the building of stature. Joseph had to go through everything he went through because later on, when his heart opened and God healed what was left of the bitterness, the only thing that was left was compassion. Your adversities are opportunities for God to open you up and put his compassion. Satan wants you to become bitter about them, but God wants to put his compassion through you. And he will. Amen. Number three, we wait on God's seasons and opportunities. Joseph was forgotten. Do you know what it means to be forgotten? Did you know rejection hurts all the time? And when you are talented and you are spurned and you are put in the back burner and nobody talks about you and nobody remembers you, God himself will pick up your file and bring it to the king. He does not need anyone's help. So if you think that in your office you have missed opportunities, people are fighting you, God's preparing you for something. But you must wait for that opportunity. Number four, we must teach the lesson of Daniel. This was a professional with a godly edge. The only thing that made him stand out was a spirit of excellence. We must teach that there can be uncorrupted government officials. Who cannot be corrupted? We must teach that we can be unrelenting prophets walking in the excellence of professional success. People who look at life from God's perspective. Number five, we must teach the lesson of David. That we must learn to conquer our own and those, our giants, our own giants, and those of our generation. When David came to see his brothers, when David came to see his brothers, everybody was terrified apart from him. And he looked and he said, ah, this one, I will deal with this one. What did he have that they didn't have? God had prepared him a 
away from the limelight. I want to speak to this generation today. Do not position yourself before a limelight that God is not shining. I see your news people. You know, you see those people when someone is speaking and then somebody is peeping. The day God puts a spotlight on you, it will be you. There will be no mistake. But before the spotlight comes, there must be content. So that the day you open your mouth, we, we did not promote a fool to the hall of fame. Because there are too many people who want the microphone and want the camera, but have zero content. And when you put them in front of both, they stutter and they wobble. And they embarrass the name of the Most High. We must begin to promote stature and maturity. We must begin to accelerate those things that God has said, done, finished, move to the next level. We must allow God to be lighting that spotlight. And that's what David did. He waited and waited. And when the opportunity came, it was just David. Using David's tools, not even Saul's tools. Nobody could take credit, let me tell you. Nobody could. He used his own armor. He used stones and sticks. Those are not conventional weapons of warfare. He went in his own terms in the name of the Lord. He engaged that war the only way he knew how. It's no wonder when the people responded, they responded appropriately. Saul has killed his thousands. David has killed the tens of thousands. The man was ready. We must teach the lesson of David to learn to lead with passion and vision without stealing. Next lesson of David. We must learn to love our enemies and honor those, God, those whom God has anointed. One of the things about this now generation is because of our impatience, we tend to think that old people are old school. I want to say this to you. Do not, do not want to be in the place where old people are. And why am I saying this? Old people have passed through many things. They have the benefit of experience. You can never buy experience. You can never get it any other way apart from being around and going through things and seeing things and seeing people. Now, you are where you are by divine design. You can only become better by having people who are older around you. You can only become better by, becoming pe by having people around you who have the experience and who have the wisdom. But I see something in our land and I need to caution against it. I see young people who want to come up and who want to head things and who want to tell the old people to go home. Old people are going nowhere. I want to say that to you now. Old people are going nowhere. Why? Because they've got, s <laughs> they've got something you need. And if you don't press in to get it, you will be the poorer. And the day you fail, and I pray you don't, you will look back and track what made you fail. It is what that old man had that you needed, but you didn't have the wisdom and the patience to mine it out of him. You did not have the humility to honor what God has put in him. You did not have the patience to wait for it to be conferred on you. There's something we have swallowed from the world that we should spit out. The world tells us that leadership is not given. It is grabbed. You've heard that. It's a lie. In the system and order of God, leadership is given. And you wait your time. And when you are waiting, that's a period of active equipping. Active preparation. Active exposure. And 
until your time comes. And when your time comes, you realize I could never have done without that old man. Never. That was David choosing to honor Saul. Saul attacked him, but he was in the previous generation. And David knew, I cannot and will not attack this man because he carries something I need. Lastly, number six, and let's finish at number six. Let's teach the lesson of Phineas in Numbers 25. What did Phineas do? He resisted the enemies of God with zeal. And today we have a problem because we have too many people who want to talk. Especially social media when something happens. People talk. <coughs> Talking is a good thing. But Phineas, seeing what was going on, you know, this is what happened in Numbers 25. Balaam had failed to curse the nation of Israel. So he told Balak, do this. These guys are going to curse themselves if you entice them to sin. God will turn on them. You achieve your objectives. So, he had them invite the young men to the feast of Baal of Peor. And when they went to that feast, part of it included having sex. It was a pagan feast of worship and part of how they worshipped was having sex. And let me tell you, they had sex and then God broke out against them and a lot of them died. But even in the process of repentance, when they were repenting, a leader brought in something young people call chips funga. <laughs> brought, brought a woman and passed right in front of where people were weeping and repenting of their sin and went and went into his tent and started having sex with this woman. Fina has said it stops here. We are not going to keep talking and crying. We will start to do. So he picked up his sword, his spear and went into that tent. And the Bible says and he speared both the man and the woman and speared them to the ground. And they died and the plague stopped. God was not looking for tears at that moment. He had had enough tears. He was looking for action. He was looking for action. In this conference, in this revival, you can have a lot of words and a lot of tears. But until it translates into meaningful action, zealous for God kind of action it will not go anywhere you will have nice notes typed written in your book you need to have the zeal of God that says I must stop wickedness where I am where it depends on me I will take my spear and I will do something if I'm called radical, so be it. If I am called whatever I am called, so be it. Now we want to pray. I want to request the worship team to come. I'd like you to go before God. We always begin this journey with forgiveness. Would you please go before the Lord and just allow him to speak to you about people who have hurt you, hurt you deeply, people you are holding on to. And they've hurt you deeply. I want you to start to speak to them, to, to God about them. Please say the following prayer. Lord, I come before you. I have been hurt. By the following people. I need you to start to name them. Name those people wherever they are. Name them. Say, Lord, so and so hurt me when they said this.
so and so hurt me when they did this. And today, no matter how difficult this is, I choose to forgive them. I release them completely. The people were hurting. You look back and you're saying, this person wasted me. Satan intended it for evil. But God intends it for good. But first you must let go of that person. Release them. Release them. Release them in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, I choose to forgive this person. And I choose to release them in the name of Jesus. Secondly, as God is going deep into our hearts, he begins to pull out the pain. Allow him to pull out the pain. Allow the tears of healing to come. Because as tears of healing come, God's power of healing comes in. Your relationships can no longer be defined by the kind of poison that goes around. It's enough. It's enough. Throwing the words is enough. That heart is enough. Father, today we come before you so that you can free us from the pain that so easily imprisons us. Let go of that man who took advantage of you. Let go of that woman who has made your life misery. You can do that today. You can do that today. Lord, we choose to do business with you today. We refuse to be stubborn. We refuse to be proud. We refuse to walk in unforgiveness. We refuse to walk in bitterness today. We choose to let go of the bitterness and the gall that poisons our system and make us sick. The people here who are taking tablets they should not be taking. If they just let go of bitterness and say it's, it stops today. This person will no longer hurt me. I will no longer hold on to them. It stops here. Yes, they took so much away from you. But God intends to give you so much more. If you will let him. If you will let him. He intends to give you so much more. Forgive them. Release them. Renounce those vows you made that I'll never forgive them. I will never look for them. I will never see them. I can do this by myself. No, you cannot. We're done with you trying to prove a point. And Father, today we come in humility and say we cannot do this without you. See, where is the queen? She will you.
Not we're bringing an announcer call to you today online. Um, just to apologize for those of you who've been wondering why you see me at this time. And we apologize for the sound issues. But the reason is because we really want to connect with you. As I said, I'm Pastor Kevin Kongo. I'm the teens pastor here at Parklands Baptist Church. You who's watching from whatever side of the country, whatever part of the globe, we want to help you with the decisions you're making right now. So in the link uh, below, in the comments box below uh, where you're watching the video, there's a link that has been placed there for you to indicate the decision you've made. Click on that link and indicate it. If you're receiving Christ for the first time, indicate it. If you're, if you're rededicating your life, indicate it. We want to connect with you. We want to connect with you and help you through this decision you're making. And so let me just pray for you at this particular point in time, then we'll go back to service. But remember, if you're on Facebook, the link is in the comment section below. If you're on live stream, the link is on your right. You've made a decision, let us know. We want to connect with you. Let me pray. Father, thank you so much for this moment and this time. A truly divine moment. We are connecting with you, dear Lord. Um, you have spoken to us clearly. The generation that is now, the generation that you want to uh, go out and do the things you want us to do. And Father, there's a lot we need to bring to you. There's a lot we need to lay at your feet. And I thank you for everyone who's doing that in this moment. Thank you for the healing that's breaking out across the land, across the globe right now. Thank you for what you're doing in the lives and hearts of many. Thank you for restoring the hearts of the children to their, their parents and the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the old to the young and the young to the old. And Father, aligning us with your perfect will and your perfect plan for us. We thank you so much for what you're doing for us. Bless them as they make this decision, Lord. As they're making this decision, Father, be with them. Help them to know you're there with them. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you so much. We cut back to service now. Reverend Tom is praying for you right now. Thank you and God bless. Every word that has been spoken against these people, we break the ordinances and the handwritings written against their lives in the name of Jesus we rebuke every darkness that is following them in the name of Jesus whether they call it bad luck bad omen jinx we break hexes in the name of Jesus I decree freedom over your life today I decree freedom in your household today in the name of Jesus. I rebuke cancers, tumors, malignancies, allergies, and every form of demonic disease. I rebuke it from you in the name of Jesus. And I command it to leave you. Go to your place of divine destination. Please say this prayer after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I confess, repent, renounce, and forsake every work of darkness, every filthiness of the flesh, every bitterness of the soul, and every waywardness of my hands and my legs. In the name of Jesus, I forsake those sins today. If I entered into any rituals, any witchcraft coming down my family line, I break those now in the name of Jesus. I now decree, let's continue in the prayer. I now decree, no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. Every time, that rises against me I now condemn this is our heritage our servants of the Lord our righteousness is from you O Lord of hosts 
I now receive blessing, prosperity, abundance, and everything in God's season and in God's time. I receive it. Pastor Ambrose, please come and do that. While we are still standing, while we are still standing as we stand at this time, Tell your neighbor the atmosphere has shifted. Tell your neighbor, I have received my portion. Amen. Those watching us in the pavilion, the message is the same. Those who have been watching us online, the message is the same. Those watching us at Eastgate, God has spoken to you. God has spoken to us tonight. And I want you to know that God at you. And the word that came tonight was specific for you and me. Amen. Reverend Tom Otieno has already released that word and that prayer. I want to give you a, mo a, mo a moment. One two minutes for you to just now individually pray. Ask God that which you want him to do. One of the things Reverend Tom Otieno said, the most important thing tonight is you take action. What are you desiring to do? Not even desiring to do. What have you planned to do because of what God has done? God has set you free. I'm saying God has set you free. I'm looking at people who have been set free. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Receive your freedom. I'm saying receive your freedom. In Jesus' name. What are you going to do with this freedom? What are you going to do with this healing? What are you going to do with what God has just given to you? You're going to take action. The Lord wants to hear your prayer. And as our sister Rebecca leads us and the team, you pray. Take a moment. And just open your mouth and tell God what to do. And if you need to step forward and pray with somebody and agree with somebody, we shall have a moment of prayer here. And then very, very soon we are going to, those who need more prayer, we shall have prayer at the tent. And then I'll tell you what to do before we leave. But this is your moment with God. This is your time. It's now. Start praying in the pavilion. Take my life and let it be. That's right. Consecrated, Lord, to thee. Yes. Take my moments and my days. Let
our hands, sing, take my silver. Take my silver and my gold. together. Somebody better give God another big hand and just tell him, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor, two or three of them, and give them a high five and tell them, I've received my miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's healing in the house. There's rest restoration in the house. There are breakthroughs in the house. Online, it's happening to you too. In the pavilion, it's happening to you too. Jesus is all that you need. I'm telling you, this is the season for the now generation. If you're standing next to an our generation, look at them and give them a 10, a 10, a 10 one, a 10, a 10, what do you call it? A high, a high 10. <laughs> there's joy in the house. I'm saying there is joy in the house. There's a ha, 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 ha in the house. Come on, somebody. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah! Glory! Praise the Lord! Amen! Amen! <laughs> Glory to God! Glory to God! You know, Rebecca said that the praise causes the enemy to be confused. Hey, I'm up. saying there's confusion in the camp. The enemy's camp. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let's 
Cause no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Say, who got the sun set free? It's free indeed. Who got the sun set free? It's free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Who got the sun set free? Have y'all ever heard the scripture that says to jump for joy? Our pastor likes to say it this way. Our pastor likes to say sometimes joy is right here. You just got to jump up into it a little bit. So come on, Parkland Baptist. Can we finish tonight with you with a dance of freedom? Come on, let's jump, 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 jump. Whoa. Let's appreciate our sister and the team. Amen. Bless you. Wow. Tell your neighbor it has been a wow moment. And who receives the glory? Why don't you give it to him now? Amen. 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 We thank God for our speaker tonight. Amen. He, he did not sound like an Anglican. <laughs> Reverend Tom Otieno, we salute you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Rebecca Don, we salute you in Jesus' name. The entire team, we salute you in Jesus' name. Bless you, sir. Amen. Pastor Ambrose, we salute you. Amen. Now, remember, we have a tent where we are still praying. If you have time, those in the pavilion, we have pastors and deacons there. At Eastgate, we have people out there. I want to remind us as we prepare to leave, we are still having fellowship. The visitors to my right, the purple, the purple room, we have tea. Tea is important because Isaiah 40 verse 1 in the King James Version says, Come for tea, come for tea, my people. You need to remember that verse. That's an important verse. Hallelujah. The rest of us, because as we finish, I know Rebecca and the team will still be playing, but we'll be having a cup of tea to the left. Now, please turn, turn, turn this way. Let's tell your neighbor there's tea on that side. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, remember this. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock, we are here. Let me tell you this. Yesterday, I told you that in 24 hours, something Tom, Tom and Rebecca have just unleashed that key. I'm telling you, it's coming your way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And so we want you to catch the moment. God is using the now generation. And God is taking them further than we can ever imagine. But with the challenge that came from Reverend Tom Otieno, go and study those notes. Go and get yourself in, in God's presence. 
and let God stir you up. Let God put you on fire for the things of God. I'm telling you, revival should not end in this church. You must carry revival with you wherever you go in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so tomorrow at 6, we are here. We have a wonderful speaker. And let me tell you this. God is just, I don't know if you noticed, God has been building things from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to today. I'm telling you, God just is building. And so position yourself for God to take you to the next level. Position yourself in Jesus' name. Position yourself in Jesus' name. So like Pastor Simon says, you better bring somebody. Those in the pavilion, that pavilion needs to be fully packed. Those at Eastgate, that place needs to be fully packed. Sunday, what, how many services do we have? Five. At what time? Yeah. What time should you come? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you better come in good time. And it's going to be amazing. Hallelujah. I want to now just speak a blessing, a benediction, and then we can fellowship as the team uh, releases us in worship. Amen? Would you like them to come again? Yeah. Okay. Carry our greetings back to church and back to your church in Lovington and uh, just tell them we have received completely in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Riggs, I can see you, see, see you standing there. And Pastor Sami, anything? You're waiting to dance. Okay. <laughs> okay. We want to appreciate our, vis our visitors. Those who came to visit, please come again. And then come again. And then come again. Uh, and, and then come again. And remember, every time you come, there's a cup of tea. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands as I bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, I release and decree your blessing upon your people. And now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace. And the victory you have received tonight, may you walk with it all the days of your life. The freedom God has released you into, walk in that freedom. Do not ever go back into bondage. You have, the, the chains have been broken. The shackles have fallen down. You are, you are free to fly. You are free to soar. You are free to go forth in the name of Jesus. You are blessed to become a blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Now look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you, yani you, I'm talking about you. You shall dwell in God's house, in God's favor, in God's security, provided for, protected, covered, satisfied. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Shalom. I cry freedom from the chains that bind our children. Freedom from the chains that bind our praises. Freedom from the lies of the enemy. From the chains that bind our children, freedom from the chains that bind our praises, freedom from the lies of the enemy, freedom. I cry freedom, I cry freedom from the chains that bind our children, freedom from the chains that bind our
I'm gonna worship a little deeper than before. Cause hey. I'm gonna love you, I'm, I'm gonna love you more than before. Yeah. Come on, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna dance more freely than before. I'm gonna dance more freely than before. I am free, who got the sunset free? It's free indeed, who got the sunset free? We declare it's saying no more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free, who got the sunset free? It's free indeed, who got the sunset free? Come on, one more time, say No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage.
Oh, and that is what you call Thursday night. Actually, this is day four. And we are just saying that freedom has come mm -hmm. our way. And the Bible says that whoever the sun sets free, free is free, free indeed. indeed. That is Rebecca Don right there with, with the NLC team signing out with the song Freedom. The joy of Ooh, the Lord. You can is hear the psych in that. Our strength. Yeah. You know, it's been amazing. It's been a time of awesome, awesome worship. Mm -hmm. A time of awesome um, moments of reflection. Yeah. Even in the sermon itself. Yes. You know, some, some moments where we needed to let go. Moments of brokenness, moments mm -hmm. of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Those things that you held in for so, so long. Yes. Probably bitterness or um, any, 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 any baggage and burden that you mm. held in your heart or your family. God has let go of them. Amen. That is what we are saying, freedom. The burdens have been lifted. The hindrances that keep us down mm -hmm. have been lifted. And we know and we pray that that has been your experience online. Amen, amen, amen. And we are joined by Johannes, your highness, <laughs> and the one and only Kilonzo, Who was Kilian. The Goliath yesterday. Th this guy was Goliath he, yesterday. He was but then you did a very good job. <laughs> Just I, I never knew that you are an actor, by the way. Do you act? Germany in uh -huh. our small church. Okay. Um, and I'm taking part there. I'm actually one of the leaders. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Kilian, <laughs> Germany is watching. I want you to say hi. Uh, how do you say hi in German? Germany is watching you by the just say hi yeah. in German. Hello, guten Abend auch von mir. Schön euch zu sehen. Or, oder ich sehe euch nicht, aber schön, dass ihr mich sehen könnt. How do you say seize the now in German? Yes. Seize the now. Ergreife das jetzt. Oh, wow. What? What? Say that again. Ergreife das Agre jetzt. Ergreife das jetzt. Ergreife Agreite das, das jetzt. jetzt. Ah. Try it again. Ergreife das jetzt. We will teach you. So that's the hashtag. That's the hashtag for Seize the, the, the weekend. Yes, hashtag in German. You've had it. Yeah. Seize the now. Yes, you understand. Hashtag Ergreife das jetzt. Oh. There we go. Awesome. There so how has your experience been for you guys, Killian? How has it been? It's day four. You've been here la since last week on mm -hmm. Thursday. It's been a week for you now. And you've been able to come for Revive Week. Tell us your experience. Yeah, so it's very intense. I enjoy the sermons mm -hmm. um, over the days. Uh, today I got a little bit carried away because I was lacking vocabulary and so on. Yes. So you see, but um, the other days were very re refreshing for myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I enjoy being here. Yeah. What's the best thing you love about Kenya? Sorry? What's the best thing you like about Kenya? Um, so far. <laughs> I think it's um, having coin on ya with the guys um, oh. who are here. Okay. Um, I really I really enjoy it. Drinking tea, <laughs> Drinking tea. Yes. laughing, having fun. Awesome. Oh, super, awesome. Super. Johannes, something For me that it's you've been the food. Uh, the food. The food is the what best. What food <laughs> have you enjoyed so um, far? Um, so we had like normal food like rice and stuff and different kinds of meat uh -huh. and we had chapati uh -huh. and we had um i don't know these uh triangle ones with meat inside samosa uh, samosa? samosa okay yeah. have you tried something called smoky smoky i'm not sure but you're not sure we'll have, maybe you've, you'll have tried it but anyway we'll, we'll take you around the city tomorrow yeah. and hopefully you can be able to uh have a taste of these things as you see you now yeah yeah, yeah. as now. you see you now so hannes what is that one thing throughout this revival season that you've taken to heart, that is your word for this season? Mm. Um, so for me, um, it's like um, this whole season. So when we, when me and Kilian decided to, to go to Kenya and with the people, we didn't know about the revi revival. We, we just um, thought, yeah, it's a good idea to just visit the people and to visit the country. Yeah. And um, then they asked us, hey, do you know that there's revival? Is that there is a revival week? Yes. Um, and we just, well, yeah, 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 that's cool. Why don't we just uh, go there and mm -hmm. attend it? Um, and we I didn't expect that much from the revival week because I just thought it's like a conference with a no. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. But um, when we were here or when we are at the services and uh, in the worship sessions and yeah. always these last parts of the serv uh, services, I like really much when mm -hmm. I'm just. Um, Ambrosia is telling stuff and when other people are around and you have just your time uh, with Jesus and for God. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's, um, I was struggling um, a lot in my life with uh, just um, following mm -hmm. Jesus and mm -hmm. giving him the first place in every single mm -hmm. um, yeah. thing, for every single thing in my life. Yeah. Um, and it just encouraged me a lot um, being here and mm -hmm. 
um, getting to know that it's important to do this and to to see the now mm. and to give Jesus your life and in every every Amen. Amen. growing that Amen. relationship Amen. and that intimacy. Amen. With Kilian, do you share the Amen. same thoughts? Um, so for me, um, it's it's a really good thing to be here and um, having having the re revival week with you guys. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it is encouraging me a lot. So um, in Germany, when I'm at work, um, I am the only Christian in a in a team um, of 30 people, mm -hmm. and it encouraged me a lot to um, to hear, for example, that is that is my time to be the light in the darkness. Mm -hmm. I think we heard wow. that yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even today, being yeah. zealous, it doesn't matter what people think, but you just hold that zeal for God, even wherever you are, even yeah. though you're the only Christian among 30. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, Linda, when I look at us sitting here, I just see what revival is all about. These are mm. two countries yeah. being represented two here. Continents, two, two continents. Two countries. Yeah. Two countries, two continents. And this is what revival is all about. Yeah. It cuts through boundaries. Exactly. Uh, to bring God's people together. together. And today, it's all, it was all about, uh, the church was all about reminding us that we are the now generation. And you guys will be here for, for a few days, mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll fly back to your country. Uh, we pray that as you guys connect back, that you'll be reminded that God has chosen you. You are royalty, you are a holy nation, are people belonging to God. And you've come to this continent to receive the church so that you can actually take this power back to your country. And we pray uh, because some of us have had the opportunity to visit your country. Uh, it's a growing country. The, the Christianity, the ratio is very small. Even in your town, by the way, it's, it's really small. But we pray that the fact that God brought you guys to yeah. Kenya, you'll yeah. be able to go back and ignite Shine that, that fire. light there. Yeah, yeah. And there will be. It starts with mm. one and it spreads. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yeah. We, um, that's re really true what you are saying, and um, we we try to to squeeze everything out of this week so <laughs> that we can um, coming back um, encouraged and mm. revived. Oh awesome. Man. awesome, 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 awesome. So uh, uh, I know Pastor Yan is is watching, yeah. and the whole crew. Leah, Anna, who else? Who else? Probably Elias or Esther, Esther or Deborah. Or those guys. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I just want you to connect with the youth all the way in Germany. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to release, uh, talk to them, speak to them. They are the now generation. And I want you to talk to them in a language that they can understand. Yes. German we'll language. We'll German. It g it's going <laughs> to go through this camera right to where they are. So we'll start with Kilian, just a few words, encourage them, and then we come to Johannes as we wrap up. Hi Leute, ich möchte euch da ermutigen, dass ihr vorwärts geht und wirklich ähm, das Licht in der Dunkelheit seid. Ihr seid diejenigen, die leuchten, ähm, ganz egal an welchem Ort, ganz egal an welchem Ort ihr seid. Genau. Awesome. Johannes? Ähm, ich möchte einfach, äh, dass, dass nicht nur ihr, sondern dass wir es als Team schaffen, ähm, die Leute in Oranienburg zu erreichen und ähm, nicht nur für uns zu sein und ähm, Lobpreis für uns zu machen und äh, Gott für uns zu erleben, sondern dass wir das richtig raustragen können und einen Einfluss, machen, äh, Einfluss haben auf die Stadt. Und ähm, da mutige ich euch und auch mich persönlich. Ähm, wir hatten eine mega gute Zeit mit den Leuten und ähm, ja, ähm, wir werden es auf jeden Fall bei uns zu Hause weiter ausbauen, hoffentlich. Amen. 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 For those who <laughs> didn't hear what he said, uh -huh. uh, the Bible says that faith is a substance <laughs> of things of for the evidence <laughs> of things. Connect with us. Uh, they will be here tomorrow, so yes. you can connect with them. Uh, all through next week, you'll be taking grounds through this country, just connecting with the people and the culture. And we thank God for you guys. Yes, okay. uh, and we pray. That as God takes you to the next level, you'll keep him at the center stage. Amen. Remember, as Reverend Tom said, that you have everything that it takes to take this gospel to the next level. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We thank you for yeah. being here. Amen. Thank Amen. You. And thank you, God, for being here. Also, we also ha can can say that. Okay. Yeah. And 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 finally, uh, it's important for us to mention this, Linda. Mm -hmm. Killian plays the guitar. Yeah, that's true. You must play before you leave. Uh, must, I don't okay, know how we maybe have. Not, maybe not maybe, here, maybe, we'll maybe tomorrow. We'll tomorrow? try tomorrow yes. and have him play the guitar. And Johannes <laughs> plays the <laughs> piano. The piano. Ah. Sometimes. Hopefully, we can have <laughs> you guys. So, we have <laughs> we the strings have. and yeah. the keys. Mm. And we may be having a concert a little bit here. Yeah. Mm. Our own yeah. Very small let's concert see. too. Okay, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> Before you leave. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, so we have a social media winner. 
do? Yeah, before we call it a night. Let's, um, see, what do you have, Maxi? let's see, let's see, let's see. We've been telling people to tweet. Mm. Uh, is, there, is there a German name for Twitter, Johannes? Yeah, it's Twitter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Twitter. Just Twitter. Just Twitter, Maxi. We'll okay. It's a name. But it's let me get like some tweets here. Yes. Um, remember, we're getting us hashtag um, season now, revival mm -hmm. season five, mm -hmm. and it's at Paki TV Twitter. Degwa, very profound hashtag season now. And we have Wilson Matthew. Yes. My goodness, I keep on coming. Wilson Matthew, it's your moment. It's my moment. Discerning God's timing, revival season five. Lovely worship by Rebecca Dawn. Yes, it was. And we have Dennis Mwakugu. You're saying. Um, you should be here Revival Week. Awesome. Um, revival Season 5, Reverend Tom Otieno really had the perfect, um, I think you meant the perfect word for me today. Hashtag sees the now. And Sharon Walla, position yourself. Do not, do not mm -hmm. position yourself mm -hmm. on the limelight that God isn't shining. That was from Reverend Tom Otieno. We were blessed. Hashtag sees the now. Max, you have some there? Yes, I have Sharon uh, Walla uh, saying, uh, talent and hard work. Ooh. This is a quote from uh, Pastor Tom. Mm -hmm. Talent and hard work produces success, but God produces continuous success. Mm -hmm. And now, um, as we wrap up, uh, I have a winner. You'll also pick a winner, Linda. And okay. uh, they get to walk away uh, with this DVD. Uh -huh. uh, I'll, I'll give out the bridge, Noel and Derito. And I'll then give out by Pastor Solomon by Pastor si okay. So the Our winner uh, of the bridge by Noel Derito, the album is none rather than, <laughs> ama other than, mm -hmm. Betty <laughs> Munyoki yeah. saying, hey. let me get that tweet. This is a powerful one. Saying, uh, oh, he's actually sent a photo. Let me send this so that we can see it. Mm -hmm. uh, saying, the energy of the youth is needed to carry the wisdom of the old. That is a uh, quote by yeah. Reverend Nakaliche saying the energy of the youth is needed to carry the wisdom of the old. So that Betty so Munyoki, mm -hmm. you get to walk away with Yay. the Bridge album by Noel Derito. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to give it to Felicity Shiro. And you say you can only become better by having older people around you. They have the experience, character, and content, and wisdom. Hashtag sees that. Now you also say even wasted relationships um, are a lie. You never wasted time. You got wiser and better. Hashtag sees that. Now, and that was by Reverend Tim Martino. Felicity, you get to win. I hope you can read some of these other letters out. Mm -hmm. Come away with live worship by Pastor Solomon Silla. Absolutely amazing. Congratulations, Felicity. Congratulations. You get yourself. Yeah. And I we have, have uh, more goodies for you. Keep tweeting, keep connecting with us. Mm -hmm. Instagram, Twitter, at Paki Baptist. It's yes. happening. And this is just day four. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. Linda. Oh, wow. We have Friday. Uh, eh. Esther, Pastor, Dr. Esther Obasi. Obasi Ike, Ike. Pastor in charge of mm -hmm. RCCG. And of course, and the Grove Awards winner. Ah, Guardian, Angel. Guardian Angel. You do not want to miss that interview. You we'll don't want to miss that we'll interview. It's going to be absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. We will have some longer time this time with him yes. and you don't want to miss him a true man of a worshiper honest honest worshiper guardian angel is going to mm. be there tomorrow mm. definitely yeah. pastor and i also want to mention uh th tomorrow will be a special service so everyone who is watching us everyone who uh can connect with us and anyone everyone who can make it tomorrow we're having a special service uh it's a special dj night so it's Ooh. all through dancing so i want you to come Wee. with your dancing shoes <laughs> we'll be having the dancers here yeah. uh representing jesus to the fullest uh -huh. Come with your dancing shoes. We'll be dancing our hearts out mm -hmm. as we climax the week and as we get ready for Revival Sunday. It's been an amazing time connecting with Johannes and Killian in studio. It's always a pleasure. It's always an honor. Mm -hmm. Thank you for and having thank us. Thank you, guys. If we thank call you, you guys, coming. will you come back again? For sure. Yeah. Are you guys planning to come back to Africa? Yeah. Next year? Well, not planning yet, but uh -huh. we would like to we'll we'll come <laughs> back. Yeah, and sure. you, on, you plan to stay for longer? Um, actually, I, w I was thinking about it, um, yes. but more information later. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so at least we've got that, yeah. that hope and that wish that he wants to come back. Mm -hmm. But thank you, guys. Yeah. It's been amazing. Remember, it was all about character today. Keeping th That's the one thing I got, the young generation. Mm. It's not just the limelight. Keeping that character, being solid. Yes. Because you can have the gifting and you go up there, but if you do not have the character, mm. it cannot keep you there. 
you yes. need to have the wisdom you need to stay low Chesa chin, you need Very to just important. be humble the lord lifts Mm. the humble but he resists the proud amen yeah. amen so thank you so much to all the guys behind the scenes the cameras our directors our producers faith our makeup artist imani house of glam <laughs> i hope you're still seizing your now thank you so much for making us look good jade. uh jade collection oh, uh banise may the lord bless you, you uh, for coming through yet another time uh, as you're doing this season again and to everyone we've enjoyed your support uh we thank god for you and let's connect tomorrow at 5 15 right here at revival week life so from us linda and myself Goodbye. it's a good night god, god bless, bless you. you amen amen have a good yeah. sleep goodbye amen. good night <laughs> good night <laughs>